just the ultimate perfect fall day. Great for rock hounding. Go for it. What are you oh, seeing yeah. down there? What are you seeing, Mark? Oh, she goes back. Oh. oh. Anything in there? Yeah. There's amphibles all over the wall on the ground. Um, I see appetites. Uh. Uh, this thing goes back like eight, nine feet at least. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, if only I had a smurf, I could just let them go in there with a chisel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, this looks good, man. Excellent. We're going to clean up. Yep. That's some special contortionist work right there. Oh, yeah. All right. We got to pull the lid off. Yes. I agree. <coughs> yeah, lid's got to come off. So, guys, um, I know we put up a video uh, a little while back. Um, must have been about a month ago now, maybe six weeks. Don't like to leave you hanging. I know we, we spoke about a few things and the possibility of opening our claim for public uh, rock hounding, uh, amateur rock hounding that is. And yes, indeed, we are still working hard on that. Uh, Fortune has sent us various things to assist us in that direction, things we didn't expect. One door closes, another one opens. So yeah, we're, um, we're definitely strongly thinking about doing that and uh, I suppose in the near future we're going to start taking some bookings. Uh, we got a couple of clubs lined up right now so uh, just hang in there be patient but one thing that I noticed has been mentioned in the last video and Mark pointed it out as well and that is that a lot of people they see us taking the crystals out of the fissures um, and they say well what's it look like when it's all shined up and I know in the past I've been kind of deficient in that respect. Um, I've never been a great cleaner of crystals, but as fortune would have it, Mark has taken it to a science. And we're going to look at a few things that he's cleaned up. Uh, and you can probably trace them back to, you know, maybe the earlier video and you can see them coming out of, out of the actual fissure. But we're going to look at some of the stuff he's cleaned up. He's going to give us a few tips. I don't think he's going to really reveal all of the secrets. Oh. No, no, he, he doesn't. You, you never tell. All. <laughs> but we'll we'll send you down the right uh, direction. Okay. Look at the feldspar, ugly as hell. But yeah, kind of an interesting find, Chris. Nice. Well done, man. Where was that from? Oh, just over the hill by uh, Fisher City over there. Oh yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, Mark, we've got a couple of videos or at least a couple of minerals sitting here which we've basically um, we found them in the uh, area of Bear Lake uh, the region of where our claim is uh, we got a couple sitting on the table do you want to explain you know their various levels of where they're at and you know where, where they are in the cleaning process so well this one right here as you can see is just it hasn't done anything that obviously came from your house. That's why there's nothing done to it. Mark has a criticism that I don't clean my minerals, and he is quite correct. He cleans his immediately. I pile mine up in the garden, and then over time. Okay, so that one's a so dirty one as it comes out of the as ground. As it comes out. This here is after dawn, a toothbrush, and a nail brush. See okay, what kind of, what are we looking at there for minerals? Like, Oh, we got a conglomerate. We got what, oh, microcline, feldspar. Okay. Feldspar, uh, amphiboles, amphiboles is um, a little bit of titanite right there. Actually, it's a nice titanite. Right oh yeah, they're layered on top of each other. There's a couple there for sure, and like a background of uh, like an amphibole background rock. You know, it's all kind of swirled together. You know, metamorphically and so it's forth. It's like a frozen soup mix. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay, so that's with the uh, you said dawn. That's and just dawn and the and the nail brush and a okay. toothbrush. Okay. Okay. And then this piece here, which dropped out of the fissure around the same time the other piece came out. Yeah, this is, well, this is pretty much well after iron out, but I don't like soaking it in iron out. If you were to soak this in iron out, mm -hmm. it'd totally screw everything up. Right. Uh, you get a white wash out, it eats some of the amphiboles out. Uh -huh. So what I do is I take a merging container, uh -huh. put warm, hot 
semi-hot water in it, uh, add your iron out, and I just take the brush and I scrub and dip, scrub and dip, and then I just drop it into the sink and soak it for an hour, rinse off, and then repeat as necessary, because you're going to miss a few spots here and there, right? So like this here, I probably did this three times with the real quick iron out, just to get it as it's looking. Now now I'm looking at it, I can even oh, see, it's I the, can do The glitter is unreal. There's a couple spots I could yeah. still do a little more. So like, are you going to help me out here with this piece? Because I would like this piece to have the same luster as that piece. Same with that, eh? That's yeah, well, feldspar. We'll clean it up. Okay. But, you know, a turd is a turd, right? So you say. So if it's a turd, it's a turd. We so, don't know until we get it clean. <laughs> well, what, one of the things we gotta we got to remember here with Mark, uh, his standards are are very high so he would call something that I would I would be quite excited to, to find and he'd go ah, over the shoulder he calls it over the shoulder that's an over the shoulder piece right so I mean here's an example like not not to not to knock my good friend Mark here but check this out like he was wondering whether he says oh it's just Micah like do we you know and he's leaving it there but that's insane look at this piece it's just stacked you've got perfect you got perfect crystal edges like like look at that six sided right one two three ba 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 all the way around to be a six sided piece that's a huge chunk like and we got tons of this stuff all over where we are where we're at eh so i mean he gets to a you know he he keeps some of the better pieces look at this calcite with appetite uh amazing amphiboles i believe that's amphibole one two three yes amphibole so that's the one i'm holding in the video right at the beginning oh and, the, and chris and his family that's the one i'm holding we never the last video it. yeah we yeah the, yeah we never showed it cleaned up okay so that's it cleaned up now right I, i'll do a still on it too so you can have a look but just a, a real quick look like look at these look at this one okay well, uh, mark could you could you tell me about this one here? Well, this is a good example. These two is what I'd call over the shoulder, right? Like, if you have a look, okay. this was in front of this one. Okay. These two proxying crystals. So when I pop this out, it's like, oh, that looks all right. Mm -hmm. But then you get to this one. Look at that. Like, oh, that's just... Oh, my goodness. And there's so much going on on this thing. Like, how did you find this? Like, was this just laying loose in the... Uh, yeah, well, no, it was jammed into a, uh, into a corner. Into a... Uh, upper part of a fissure and they were just stacked into the corner right oh that is just and uh, is that amphibole or that's uh, uh, the stop sign and the sides of it which to me there I don't know I couldn't my eyes not that great to say well that's a stop sign I mean it looks a little distorted but yeah but uh, but I get it right like yeah it's it's eight-sided is the point right and those two came right together Right, but you can see when you're looking at this one, you can see the eight-sidedness, like a stop sign, as he says. Whereas with the amphibole, it is very clearly a six-sided thing. Now, eight-sided, it's the the prism is not necessarily. Um, the The point is that the angles are very close to ninety degrees with the pyroxenite, right? So it could look like a square in some cases, like for example, maybe scapolite, but when you look at this the the prism has been modified so the corners are basically sheared not really sheared that's the wrong word to use but the corners have been modified by maybe a like that and now it looks like an eight-sided prism as opposed to a four-sided prism right so like one problem you know that i've been having mark is you know i've, I've been cleaning up certain minerals like amphibol matrix and and what have you and it dries, it looks great when it's still wet, and then it dries out, it looks like it's got like a white soap scum on it. Uh, the Everything looks washed out in it, you know, like if it's green, it doesn't look green anymore, it looks kind of like a, a pale version of what it was. Like, what's going wrong there, for me? You're not soaking it afterwards, so the iron out gets into the uh, crevices, and it sits there. If you just give it a quick winch, throw it on the rack, well, it gets in there and it just, it doesn't rot everything, but it just washes everything out i think it still kind of spreads and runs and it's do you, just white coating on everything and do you dilute the, the iron out do you dilute it at all like when you're using it or no i just kind of eyeball it merge in container and i throw enough in until it, so it starts to fizz okay and then i just dip the brush and go okay and and you were mentioning this stuff here and i said ah why don't we use this don't touch that that's that's garbage as okay. soon as you spray it on it's eaten it's eaten it it's it's too strong enough yeah it's not even a white coating it actually eats into the amphiboles Okay, so, so I tried it on the amphibole. That was it for me. I'm done. That's good enough for me. I wouldn't throw it on anything. 
So the muriatic acid, which I've used and you do not use, um, muriatic acid, it works great for quartz, but everything else, it's it, like the calcite is just bubbling and fizzing. It's dangerous as hell to use for starch. You get that stuff in your eyes, you're done. And appetite, it makes it look like it's washed and bleached to me. It takes it, it the totally. color right out. It takes the color right out, washes it right out, right? Yeah. So, so like I did, a, I did a little experiment and I guess, I don't know, your appetite, your... You know, your, your prize appetite that you find, you probably want, wouldn't want to do this with, but if we've got like a, a big rock, so for example, something like, uh, let's have a look here what Mark's got here sitting around. Look, look, look at that for an appetite. You know, like look at the size of that. How heavy is that, Mark? Do you know? That's 6.4 pounds. Shame it's so ugly. Oh, it's got a lovely green color on the top though, I must admit, right? You can see some titanite in this thing you got sitting here. This is a nice one here. Here we go. Yeah. Too bad it's broken, but that's... Oh, nice, nice uh, termination on yeah, the top, a big eh? Boy. That's a beauty, right? But where I was going, and I got myself distracted, right? Something like this, for example, right? I was putting uh, melted wax with a with a paintbrush. I would put melted wax over the crystal, and then I would paint muriatic acid with a, with another paintbrush around here, and it did some reasonable kind of a job in terms of exposing appetite this is not the example I've got it at home but I mean if you've got the patience uh, and I mean, I mean if it's a really beautiful specimen you should have the patience if you've got the patience um, you can have a go at it right oh look at this one look at that there's a nice one eh where did we find that I remember you found that's, that what was the name uh, of that that's going out uh, Shafee's Lockway in that direction yeah, yeah yeah oh look at this one eh uh, somebody came around Phenomenal. Reason why. What's your secret, Mark? Do you have a secret? Would you share it? Dig hard and dig to the bottom. Exactly. This guy is a digging machine. I say we call him our uh, chief extraction officer of chief Dark Star Mines. Chief extraction officer. Chief yeah. science officer. Well, the science <laughs> officer the science officer's not that good at what he does, but the extraction officer definitely <laughs> makes his money doing what he does. Not that we make okay. money at this Might point. Show the big titanite to you then. Yeah, yeah. Bring out the titanite. Bring out the ones. There you go. Oh, there's a titanite. Whoa! You can spin it around. You can Whoa! See it's floral Richterite. Or I haven't seen this one, dude. When? How long ago did you get that? That's I don't know, a year and a half. Oh, that's nice, dude. That's a nice one. That's a serious one, eh? Yeah, I like it. Jeez, eh? Too bad the under underneath's a little damaged, but the top. That's well, the here. underneath is damaged because I, I didn't realize what it was. It was in the hole backwards. It was a rock that was in my way. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I put the shovel to it and give it a, give it a <laughs> crack, and you pull it out, you go, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. So, okay, so we've talked about damaging our crystals using stuff that's too harsh, appetite being wrecked by muriatic acid, the iron out if the concentration is too strong, um, makes your makes your minerals again look washed out. Mark dilutes. Um, he's gonna give us a. He's gonna show us what that piece there looks like once it's done. But oh, what you got there, Mark? Old old Bear Lake. Bear Lake one. Bear Lake one. Lovely. Let's have a look here. Ancient so history. Back in the past, Mark and I used. Ooh, very very shiny. And if, apparently that rare mineral, the fluoro, very fluoro copper. Blah, 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 um, it's also, incidentally, a very shiny kind of mineral, but you look... All right, well, this one here, that'll, that'll blow your peanut. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, nice. That is... Oh, that is absolutely beautiful, right? There, there's an example of what the cleaning does, too, right? Very nice, Mark. One of your favorite pieces? That's, that is my favorite piece. Really, eh? Had to keep an eye on Chris Fouts, man. Looked like he wanted to steal it when we bought it to show him, eh? He didn't want to put it down, no, did he? No, no. <laughs> Must have to intervene. And I don't blame him. I don't want to put it down half the time. Yeah. Chris is going to do a little something with us, too. Uh, we, we're talking about some ideas that will work for both of us. And, you know, we're thinking, like, if you're not part of a club but you want to go on a tour, you know, I'm quite sure Chris Fouts will be rising to the occasion. But you'd have to contact him. What's his business? Lakeside? Lakeside Gems. Lakeside Gems, yeah. So here's a good example right here of what we mean by the pyroxene versus the amphibol. Look at that. So it almost looks like you're looking down a, a sort of square-sided prism, you know, four-sided or whatever, but it's just a little bit off. However, notice, 
the edges there are beveled as well. So that potentially, if you could see the whole prism from above or from the side, um, you would see an eight-sided shape, right? So that's a pyroxene for sure. Now somewhere else, uh, we could look at the amphibole and you could quite clearly, okay, this is likely to be another example of an eight-sided shape. It's hard for me to point at it. There it is. But uh, again, the edges are beveled. Typically, it might look four-sided, but in actual fact, it's, it's eight-sided, pyroxenite, right? Floaters like that. That's a floater, you said? Yeah, that's a floater for sure. Oh, you even remember when you found that? This, this was, um, wasn't this right at, didn't we get a lot of these shiny ones right at the front of that old Bear Lake Diggins near the, where the sign was? I think so. Yeah, and I not, remember and we, not, had a spot, we had a spot there that we just used to... And not that far down either. Oh, very nice. Look at these, See, eh? There's there some of your, I, I believe, proxying crystals right there. Oh, let's have there's a look. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Looking at the square, almost a 90-degree angle between the major faces. You are absolutely correct, my man. Another strange floater. You don't see that very often. I don't see that very often anyways. Oh, yeah. One, two, three... Yeah, that's nice, eh? Not even broken on either end. It's it's a perfect crystal. Uh, you know, that's that's basically what we we call the earth crystals. When when we're talking about earth crystals that we produce, that's this kind of stuff. It's it's in perfect condition, simply lifted out of the soil um, by our hands. We haven't been having to pick it off a wall or something like that. Uh, lustrous as can be. This is this is powerful stuff, man. It's beautiful. So how much do we have? He, he, Mark literally, between Mark and I, we literally have our basements full <laughs> with this stuff from from our time on these patent claims. Uh, Old Bear Lake Diggings being a good example. Um, and that's basically what we're going to be selling on the site starting off until we can get to uh, to um, a lease with the, with the government. Uh, yeah, the government. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still, yeah. there's still the option of going rock hounding, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that again, uh, you know, we're, we're going to open it up for people to do that at a, at a small, reasonable fee for our supervision. And yeah, that's um, good. I mean, there's no locations. I mean, everything out there has been turned over and regurgitated and then turned over again, right? Exactly. Except, except Bear Lake 2. Well, they barely <laughs> getting started, baby. that one. Yeah, We're just yeah. starting up. Unlimited That's fishers. just me and you doing damage there. <laughs> uh, well, only for purposes of assessment. But again, as amateur rock hounds, clubs can come in with our permission uh, and, a, and a small reasonable fee. And uh, we'll give you a talk. We'll give you a safety briefing. It's going to be really important to stick with the safety aspects of things. Um, you know, that's, we don't want anyone getting hurt, right? That's one of the main things. And we'll always be on site uh, when a club is up there to, to visit and do some collecting of their own. And we'll supply some of the heavy duty tools, right? 50 pound oh, yeah. smash bar, sledgehammer. I mean, not everybody has a 50 pound smash bar in their inventory, no, right? No. Or a, uh, you know, 10 pound sledgehammer. We'll, we'll supply some of the heavy equipment, right? Exactly. You know, for people who, you know, need to remove boulders. The whole idea is, if you're collecting, that's that's your thing. But when we're collecting, um, if we were to do collecting as we always have done, we've done it in a very um, green kind of way, I guess is how you'd say it, right? You know, we've always valued the idea of what we call earth crystals. Um, you know, we're we're using our hands as a, as a as a general rule of thumb, right? But there'll be fishers where those who just want to go at it can go at it uh, with with a smash bar, and then there'll be. Fishers that we've taped off, which we're asking people not to touch because we're going at it with our hands, right? That's the whole idea with earth crystals. But it takes time to get down to where you can dig with your hands. It oh, takes 50 yes. pound smash bar and a sledgehammer to get to that level. <laughs> yeah. If you want good stuff. Like yeah, really some, nice sometimes stuff, you'll run right? into a cap rock that, you know, a guy of my size just won't fit through without, without a bit of persuasion. And we're not talking me because I'm not into dieting too much. And a bit right? of butter. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joke there, right? There is a joke, but we won't go there, man, unless you see us personally. Okay, guys, so I think that, that that's it for now. Um, we're heading out tonight for a, a little dinner, so that's where we have to leave it today. Thank you, Mark. Really appreciate your insights. No problem, anytime. Chief Extraction Officer for Dark Star.